Hey guys, it's Yusuf from Luxury Reports. I'm back. I'm in the 2019 Honda Passport. And if you have a certain age, the image that pops in your mind is probably this. If you're not a certain age, then it's probably what I'm going to show you in a few moments. I show you right now, but it's just way too hot outside and I don't feel like dying because remember, global warming doesn't exist and I'm sweating for no reason right now. In October. Anyway, so yeah, 2019 Honda Passport. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the looks of the 2019 Honda Passport. Now, if this looks a little familiar to you, it's probably because it looks like a Honda Pilot. And by it looks like a Honda Pilot, I mean, to me at least, it looks exactly the same as a Honda Pilot. So, if you're a fan of the way the Honda Pilot looks, you'll like the way the Passport looks. If you're like me and you're not really a fan of the Pilot looks, you're not going to be a fan of the way the Passport looks. Regardless, there's some changes here and there. You do have a blacked out grille, some blacked out molding, some more gray plastic molding that somehow makes it look more rugged. Never really understood that, but hey, I'm not a designer. The taillights are a little bit different. And of course, the wheelbase is shorter, but regardless, it's pretty much a Honda Pilot. Okay, for different sake, the interior is completely different compared to the Honda Pilot. And by completely different, I mean it's still exactly the same. But again, if you like the way the interior of a Honda Pilot looks like, you will like the interior of a Honda Passport. Regardless, the seats are comfortable, everything is laid out logically, minus the gear shifter, which takes up a lot of room in the center console. But it's a Honda, so everything is where it should be. Fit and finish is generally very good. It's very quiet on the inside. You have plenty of room in the second row seats, plenty of room in the cargo area. Overall, size-wise, the Honda Passport is spot on. Powering the Honda Passport is a 3.5 liter V6 making 280 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque. That is tied into a 9-speed automatic and IVTM4 all-wheel drive. And that just sounds horrible, so whoever named that, please stop. Regardless, if you're familiar with Acura's all-wheel drive system, mechanically it's similar to SH all-wheel drive which A sounds better. And B, regardless of each system, performs amazing on the road. The all-wheel drive system can transfer torque to any one wheel that needs it, regardless of axle location or anything else. It helps the Passport be absurdly nimble around town, and if you are the 1% or 0.1% that may take it off-road, the off-road capability of the Passport is actually frankly amazing. Regardless, driving dynamic wise, the Honda Passport is pretty great. It's not as quick as, for example, a Chevy Blazer, but it will get the job done for the demographic it's targeting. And maybe that's you. Alright, on to some annoyances of the Honda Passport. First off is the rear view camera. The resolution looks like someone stole a webcam from Logitech back in 1998. The resolution is dull, it doesn't look very good at night, and overall, for a 2019 model year vehicle, it's frankly a little unacceptable. The other annoyance is the gauges. They are easy to read. To me, they look a little cheap. The tachometer readout is very hard to read as well. And we have one other annoyance, which we will talk about at the very end. Let's quickly compare the Passport to some of its closest competitors. First off is the Grand Cherokee. Grand Cherokee stylistically wise looks great. On the exterior it's still fresh. The problem is it's based on an old Mercedes platform from at least 1672. It's not modern and unfortunately the interior does reflect that. The interiors are cheap, 
the seating position is not optimal, and the rear seat comfort is abysmal to say the least. So the Passport wins. It wins for a superb drivetrain, a better all-wheel drive system, more interior room, and better gas mileage. Next up is the Ford Edge ST and of course this Honda Passport. The Edge does have, well let's say an Edge, the drivetrain is a lot more exciting. The 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6 is stellar. It's a wall of torque. Unfortunately it's mated it to a slow shifting automatic and all drive system is okay. The biggest thing I can give the Edge is the, again, the interior quality is just subpar and the gauges look horrible. Regardless, there is decent interior room and cargo holding capability as well, but overall, again, the Honda Passport wins. And the Passport wins again because of interior quality, it's a better value, the all-wheel drive system is superb and ride quality is stellar. Alright, lastly we have the Santa Fe versus the Passport. The Santa Fe is brand new for this year, as is this Passport. Santa Fe to me aesthetically looks a lot better on the inside and outside. The interior quality is superb and it's just a very stylish looking vehicle inside and out. The things I can only give it is the drivetrain tends to be a little bit harsh compared to Honda's smooth 3.5 liter V6. So overall, unfortunately, to me, it's a tie. There's actually one last competitor to this brand new Honda Passport, and ironically enough, it's its big brother, the Honda Pilot. Let me go ahead and explain. So we have a Passport Elite here, and you can get a Pilot Touring, all-wheel drive, with leather, and more or less the exact same interior appointments and features for $105 less. And why would you do that? Because the Pilot's physically bigger. And by physically bigger, I mean not that much. You just get a third row, so you get added functionality for less money. And it's the exact same drivetrain, you have the same motor, the same transmission, and the exact same all-wheel drive system. And looks-wise, again, it looks exactly the same as well. So you're not really losing anything. So I'm just confused. Regardless, do what makes you happy. I will get the Pilot over the Passport mainly because it's you get getting more for your money. But that's just me. Alright, so overall, what do I think of the Honda Passport compared to its non-pilot competitors? The Passport is great, it's smooth, it's quiet, it rides phenomenal. Plenty of interior room on the second row and cargo room as well. The all-wheel drive system makes the Passport nimble around town, so overall, Passport is a great deal. But compared to the Honda Pilot, not so much. Regardless, this is Yusuf signing off. Talk to you guys soon.